I just want to start off this video by saying there is not a doubt in my mind that Normani will reach her full potential. I just don't think it's going to be this year. Hey poopy, pop culture fairy here. If you're new, welcome to the channel where we sprinkle a little magic on all things pop culture. If you're into deep dives, hot takes, and all the latest buzz, you're in the right place. Now, let's get into it. Back in June, Normani Corday Hamilton finally released her debut album. After five long, painful, agonizing years. Following Wildside, pretty much all we got from Normani in the meantime were ads and maybe a cute TikTok if we were lucky. She repeatedly mentioned that the album was on its way and even revealed that it had a title back in 2018. She then told us in the summer of 2021 that it was going to be lit, alluding to an album release. And you know, naturally, you feel a bit deceived and a tad uninterested when half a decade goes by and there's still no album. So imagine our surprise on February 21st, a completely random Wednesday afternoon, when she officially announced that the album was coming. This time, we finally received a title and an album cover, but still, no date. As a loyal, yet malnourished, Normani fan, I was skeptical. Nonetheless, my hope for the album's special guest appearance remained unwavering, and on June 14th, 2024, the album was officially released. I've sat with the music. Let it marinate. I've done the work. Overall, I give the album 7 out of 10. In my opinion, the album is a solid body of work. She played it safe, but there are definitely some gems on this album. My favorite songs on Dopamine are Take My Time, Big Boy, Still, Candy Paint, and Insomnia. Something I noticed that I really liked throughout her music is her use of alliteration and catchy sounds like... I think she's prepping that to be her signature, which is great from a branding perspective. It's something for people to associate with Normani and her music. It gives the songs more charisma. We even see this present in her single, Wild Side. Overall, the album has a cohesive sound and fun lyrical elements that hint at a promising future as she continues to develop her music. Pitchfork gave the album a 7.4, and on Metacritic, it is scored a 73. Was it worth the wait? I'm happy that Normani put out her first album. I know it was something challenging for her, especially given the events in her personal life that contributed to the delay in the album release. Normani has mentioned that she is a perfectionist and that artists don't get do-overs when it comes to their first album. That being said, Dopamine is good, but slightly underwhelming and anticlimactic. Especially considering Normani's resume, she was a member of one of the biggest girl bands of the 2010s, went platinum with her debut single, Motivation, and her feature on Khalid's Love Lies. I was just expecting more. Nevertheless, I'm so proud and grateful that we were able to receive this album and witness the growth of Normani's artistry. She's definitely coming into her own and developing a sense of trust and well-earned cockiness in her achievements. Dopamine debuted at number 91 on the Billboard charts with 13,000 copies sold. I honestly don't blame the public for not messing with the music for real because there wasn't much promotion for this album. I think we all expected Normani to just be this instant pop sensation because we see the glaringly obvious potential, but maybe that's just not her journey, and I'm perfectly content with that. If anything, this has been the year of the slow burn artist. There is no doubt in my mind that Normani will reach her full potential and get her flowers eventually. That being said, this album doesn't sound like it was five years in the making. It still feels like Normani is holding back. I also would have wanted more diversity on the tracks as well. It would have been nice to hear a rock influence record, something like Ashanti, Only You, or Don't Let Go by En Vogue. Some tracks exploring a topic that she hasn't touched on yet would have been very much welcomed. Both of her parents are sick during a pivotal and transitional time in her career. Musically, she's never even addressed the topic of her insecurities, the racism she's encountered, or how she felt mistreated and invisible while being in Fifth Harmony. An empowerment anthem taking the directions of Demi Lovato's confidence or Lizzo's good as hell could have been a fun direction to go in that would highlight her perseverance throughout her time in the music industry. Boring, yawning, 
sloppy, lazy. <sighs> this was just a little abysmal. abysmal. I just feel like at this point, we know what we should be doing, but we're not doing it. Where is the late night interview with one of the Jimmies? Where is the morning interview with Jennifer Hudson? So we could see these two women sing together in harmony, resulting in a viral moment for TikTok. Where is the Drew Barrymore interview where Drew invades Normani's personal space as she discusses her mom's battle with breast cancer? Which would have been a perfect collaboration considering that Drew has publicly supported this cause numerous times. I mean, even Ice Spice and Sweetie have performed on SNL and neither of them were promoting an album at the time. Nor are they artists that people are dying to see perform. No tea, no shade, no lemonade. But they come on stage with a two-step, a booty short, and a dream. We still have no visuals or a live performance of any tracks on the album. We don't even have a nothing budget, just vibes, Instagram live concert a la Doja Cat style from Normani. The rollout is not at the caliber that it should be for Normani. And quite frankly, it's upsetting me and my homegirl. Would you say for your debut album Mm -hmm. that this, uh, that the promotional pieces, that everything came together exactly how you want it? Absolutely not. Absolutely (laughs) not. Absolutely not. What what would you have done differently? Hmm. It's hard to answer that question only because I feel like there's been so much prior to even the rollout that has kind of affected the outcome Mm. and like the result of i think that we were doing the best that we could with the cards that we were dealt and what Mm. was given a lot's changed from the beginning of the process when it comes to this album up until now um in terms of the business on my behalf things could have just been handled more responsibly Mm, that's honest um And then things happened that were just kind of inevitable in terms of like my team switched, which Mm -hmm. was for the better, by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. But in real time, like it didn't feel very good, Mm -hmm. especially with trying to put this album out and that feeling like yet another roadblock. Mm -hmm. Um, So there had been plenty of times where I really didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I wasn't necessarily sure like how this was going to. Wow come out for real. Despite what others may say, Normani made a genuine effort to promote the album. She did interviews with Rolling Stone, Harper's Bazaar, and Zack Sang. She even graced the cover of a few magazines. She tried, and you know, A for effort. Honestly, I could have told her that the song with Gunna wasn't gonna go anywhere. It didn't even touch the Billboard Hot 100, and this is her first single in two years. It's only Saving Grace could have been a music video, but that's been teased since May. I still speculate that there's a lot of tomfoolery happening behind the scenes that is beyond Normani's control, especially when it comes to releasing music videos. If it was up to me, Candy Paint would have been the first single. It was already a fan favorite before it was even officially released on the album due to it being leaked on the internet years prior and it being featured in a Bo's ad. There was a TikTok dance for the song gaining some traction organically. It just seemed like the obvious choice. I know I mentioned Normani's style in my last video about her and some of you in the comments disagreed. Well, prepare to disagree again. I don't dislike her style, I just want more. As you know, music icon status and fashion icon status go hand in hand. It gives the public something to talk about, remember fondly, and feel inspired by. Just think about it. If someone wanted to wear a Beyonce Halloween costume related to her Lemonade era, instantly you can think of a fashion moment. Same for Rihanna in her Loud era. Would anything specific come to to mind for Normani's dopamine era. Based on the album and the visuals we did see, this era embodies a dark, 
futuristic 2000s aesthetic. I think chunky highlights would have been fitting for the era. Maybe a little Kim platinum blonde hair moment, Brandy braids, Beyonce braids. There were also so many fun and unique hairstyles Black women did in the 90s and 2000s that she could have easily taken inspiration from. Like how are we only rocking jet black hair with bangs while having an album that embodies the 2000s? Even if these ideas were not a mainstay and were just for a magazine cover or press, it would have been a welcome change. I just want to see Normani move more out of her comfort zone with her look. I've put together some outfits for various events, all perfectly capturing the vibe of the era that she's in. I understand that there's only so much Normani can do to promote her album, and the extent of her efforts is often limited by what the label supports. We've already touched on how RCA is kind of ass in a previous video. However, comma, I feel like Normani could try to put herself out there a bit more. I understand that she's had negative experiences with social media in the past, so this could have been a great opportunity to be a little nostalgic and promote the album similarly to how it was done before the internet, with fans interacting with their favorite artists face-to-face, -face, in person. For example, Charlie XCX promoted her banger album, Brat, by dropping hints about her location, bringing a boombox, and having a full-on dance party with her fans. She could have also hosted album signing events or fan contests, just something, anything to help her connect with her fans more. In the beginning of her music video for Motivation, she was watching herself on 106 and Park. It would have been cool to see a callback to that music video, see a recreation of the 106 and Park set, even if it was a sh little green screen, call up Bow Wow or Terrence J and do a short scripted interview. Perhaps she could have done 2000s inspired photo shoots and TikTok. Halsey and Lotto have been really killing it with this concept lately. I can also see Normani doing her own spin on iconic magazine covers from popular celebrities in the 2000s. Another fun idea to promote the album could have been silver rocket ship statues in popular cities for fans to take photos with. A video of her performing acoustic versions of the songs on Dopamine could have also been helpful in addressing criticism about Normani's vocal ability. Musical collaborations have always been a beautiful way of bringing fan bases together and building up hype for projects. Ideally, I think Take My Time with Ariana Grande would have been perfect. They've already collaborated on music before and even toured together. This collaboration would have definitely performed well. And I really miss when major female artists would do record-breaking collaborations together. In conclusion, RCA, Normani, Normani team, my gosh, pull yourself together and release the damn video. Normani recently shared that she's recovering from an injury. This led her to canceling a performance on the BET Awards, where she was supposed to be a part of a tribute for Usher. I hope she's having a speedy recovery and we could potentially see her go on tour this year. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Would you go to see Normani live in concert? And what are your thoughts on the album? If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching and for your continued support. Be sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Stick around so you'll never miss an update. This is the Pop Culture Fairy, signing off. TTYL!